All right. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you uh, for joining our call today. My name is Ozma Khan, and I am a campus recruiter at Mercer. Um, today, we are um, going to chat about our career practice, um, and I will be the moderator for the call. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, we would love to see your beautiful faces, so feel free to keep your videos on if you choose. Uh, everyone's mics are currently muted, and we ask that you keep yourselves on mute for the duration of the presentation portion. There will be time for Q&A at the end uh, where you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Additionally, as we move through the presentation today, feel free to ask any questions in the chat box, um, and we will do our best to get your questions answered. Um, and lastly, following the presentation, we will reach out to all of you with additional Mercer in, um, information and resources. Um, along with information um, on our future sessions, uh, plus the link to the session recording. Um, and additionally, once our positions are posted, we will share the opportunities with you, along with instructions on how to apply. Now let's get the session started. We have two great speakers here with us today who are excited to chat with you. Um, Alex and Meredith, the floor is yours. Thanks, I can kick us off. So hi everyone, um, glad you all are able to join and we're excited to talk to you more about the career business, which is the part of Mercer that um, both Alex and I work in. Um, if you go to the next slide. We're pausing for dramatic effect. Um, <laughs> um, so we'll, we have a lot to cover today. I'm sure you will have lots of questions um, coming from all the great content we'll talk about, but we'll start by giving kind of a brief overview about Mercer and career um, and a little bit about ourselves and our career journeys since we've started at Mercer almost four years, or around four years ago for both of us. Um, we'll walk you through a couple um, of examples of types of projects that we've done, just to give you a little bit of um, flavor for the type of work and what that actually looks like on the ground. Um, and then we'll leave about 20, 25 minutes at the end for Q&A. So if we go to the next slide, I won't spend too much time here because I feel like you've probably had some other sessions that kind of give the overview of Mercer overall. But if we go to the next slide, just to kind of contextualize, um, I guess, our business overall, I'll, why don't we just go to the next slide actually for the sake of time and um, I'm sure you have had this type of overview before. So yeah, in terms of, you know, how career fits into the overall spectrum of services at Mercer. So we're combined of kind of three different, what we call lines of business. Um, so health, wealth, career has a nice ring to it. Um, and we kind of fit into this last column called career. So I like to, in layman's terms, say that this is anything really related to your people of an organization, um, providing you know career development, compensation, um, performance, talent management, and all the strategy and change management that goes along with that. Um, again, we'll kind of get into some detailed examples, but, um, you know, we do a lot within each line of business as you'll come to learn as you learn more about our company. And I mean, me even being four or five years into the job, you know, I'm still able to do new projects. Like I haven't touched some of the things even on this list in my tenure here. So lots to talk about and lots to cover. And if we go to the next slide. Yeah. So we'll start. Um, this is kind of the fun part where Alex and I will tell you a little bit about ourselves um, and our journeys here at Mercer. Um, so I'll start. So um, I grew up in Tex Houston, Texas, um, but I'm currently in New York, but most people that meet me cannot believe that I'm from the South. Um, and then um, I went to Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was in their um, business school there. So I studied consulting and marketing in the business school. And like I said, that was in Atlanta. So, um, you know, back in the day where campus recruiting and being in person was um, the usual or the norm, you know, I was able to get an internship at Mercer in our Atlanta office. Um, so I spent my junior summer there working in career the entire time. Um, and then ultimately accepted a full-time offer as a career analyst at Mercer, again, starting in Atlanta after I graduated um, my senior year. So spent my um, first almost two years um, in Atlanta, really getting my feet wet um, 
and getting my bearings, I guess, of the career practice and working um, with clients more so in, in the South. Um, and while I was there, I got promoted to senior analyst. Um, and one great thing about Mercer too, is you get to, I mean, I guess what differentiates us from a lot of consulting firms is, you know, you're not necessarily traveling Monday through Thursday and coming back on Friday, you know, you get to work on a lot of different projects and travel at all different points of your career. Um, so I guess one key highlight for me was when I was on a project um, in Atlanta, I got to travel to Belgium and Poland for two weeks. Um, and this was doing a global, what we call job evaluation project. So kind of looking at jobs and how they're defined um, on a global basis for a large um, consumer packaging company. Um, in addition to that, you know, while you're at Mercer, there's lots of training opportunities. So one of the um, my most memorable trainings that I was able to do was while I was still in Atlanta, attend a project management training in New York where they bring people together for two to three days, um, lots of live workshops, and you know, there's continued training and education that is always available to us at Mercer. Um, even amidst a pandemic, you know, we've gone all virtual with a lot of that, but I think that's been one key resource that's enabled me to kind of develop skills over time. So now we're getting to kind of more my, my present day life. So um, not to throw all the different unique opportunities at you that Mercer has, but I actually was able to transfer from Atlanta to New York um, by doing kind of a test run rotational program um, where they sponsor you to go work in another office within your um, line of business. So again, still within career. Um, and so I was able to test out the waters in New York City and decided that I wanted to stay full time. Um, I've been working in the New York office for about two years now, working on a variety of projects. Um, and while I was here, I have gotten promoted to associate. And you know, now I think we're, um, and Alex and I are both similar in the sense, you know, working on larger scale projects that um, while I didn't spend too much time on all the different parts of career, you know, now we're at a point in our career where we're able to not just do one piece of that puzzle, but kind of see how it all connects together and really be that um, overarching project manager for types of projects um, and, and being able to support additional resources on the ground that, that help bring those to life. Um, I, I'll finish my spiel with just some fun facts too. Um, in addition to kind of all the things I do within Mercer, um, and this is still somewhat within Mercer, I lead our um, Rising Professionals Network in New York. Um, and so this is one of many business resource groups that we have that focuses on um, young professional um, development and networking opportunities. So we plan um, lots of events for the New York office and most recently have been figuring out how to bring different offices together amidst the pandemic to kind of be able to network and maintain that um, sense of community that we have here at Mercer. Um, other fun things I like to do on the side, I have my own foodstagram and I'm an avid um, cycler, not like cycling, like road biking, but like actually getting on, on the bike and, um, you know, for getting specific soul cycle here. Um, and then <laughs> the last thing is, um, you know, I really enjoy just the social and food scene in New York. And that translates to one other additional responsibility that I have at Mercer, which is, um, you know, helping plan social events for our group. Um, and all in all, I'll just, I, I know I didn't, again, go too much into detail about the different types of work that we do, which I think will be more brought to life when we show you some examples. Um, but I think one thing that differentiates Mercer from other firms is really, it's not just about the work we do, but who you work with and how we work. Um, we work with really smart, motivated, and fun people, which makes coming to work every day that much more enjoyable. Um, and just the fact that, um, you know, I, I think Mercer differentiates itself by the breadth of things that we do and your ability to work on multiple different teams, which allows you to, you know, build lots of different skill sets from time management, um, collaboration, relationship ma management and building and, and all those different things. So um, that's a little bit about me and a little bit more about Mercer and I'll hand it over to Alex to talk about it more. Sorry, I like to talk, so. <laughs> so before we do that, I'm gonna switch. Um, we have funky fonts, so I, <laughs> I'm gonna switch and start sharing my screen so that their presentation looks like how they put it together. 
doing that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there we go. That looks much better. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Alex, you're on mute. Oh, I was muted by the host. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so, sorry. Um, so my career progression is kind of similar to Meredith, so I won't belabor it too much, but I grew up in Ashland, Massachusetts. I went to Boston College. I don't know if any of you on here did as well. I studied econ and psych with a minor in management and leadership. Uh, I know when I was in your shoes, I did not know what human capital consulting was. I kind of was starting to get familiar with consulting and knew it was a great entryway into my career. I also wanted to combine kind of the quantitative and qualitative side of what I was studying. So economics is more uh, quantitative, psychology more qualitative. I learned about the position online and I interviewed. I also knew I wanted to come to New York and the position online was open in New York. So I took a train uh, in the middle of my senior year. I did not intern here and interviewed and got the position. So following graduation, I moved to New York City, which was, again, my dream. And I was excited to start as a consultant. So about months into my career, I got promoted to senior analyst. So that first kind of period is just kind of learning the ropes, understanding how Mercer career works, um, understanding kind of the internal tools. We have a lot of different resources that we use that take a long time to get adjusted to. Um, no one's expected to know them straight out of college. It's not something you study in one of your classes. Um, once I was promoted, I kind of continued to get experience in a breadth of projects, so including exec comp, broad-based rewards, job architecture. You're really encouraged when you start your career uh, to try and volunteer yourself for as many different types of projects as possible because you don't really know what you'll enjoy or be good at. And so it's also kind of paving your own career within the career business. And also you wanna work with kind of as many different people as possible. So that first couple of years as a senior analyst is really about kind of learning the ropes, building your skills, building your Excel skills um, and building that foundation. So along the way, I made strong friendships, which was not something I was expecting out of a job. And I was pleasantly, more than pleasantly surprised. I don't even know how you describe it at how friendly and similar I felt like my colleagues were, but also, uh, different and I could learn from them. So I built strong friendships and you can see there, Meredith is there and that's one of our other colleagues, Andre, in the middle. Um, and then I was on my first long-term on-site client project, which Meredith was also on as well. So that was kind of cool because it was a lot of hands-on client experience. So it was the first time where I was truly interacting with, you know, uh, chief level, Exec executives in this company, which was really cool and really, a, I feel like a growth period for me to be able to kind of share my expertise as a consultant with uh, these individuals in the organization. And they really look to us for insight, which was, I, looking back for someone kind of one to two years out of college, I think that's a really unique opportunity and I'm very grateful for that. I was then promoted to associate where I kind of started like Meredith to uh, take on more project management responsibilities. And I also got more involved with other aspects of Mercer. So more um, recruiting internship program. I was the intern uh, manager uh, for the past couple summers and really kind of promoting Mercer because I really do enjoy it so much and want to share our experience with as many people as possible and get really top talent in. Uh, so like Meredith now working on larger scale projects and really doing that more project management role, which will help uh, and be expected at the senior associate level when that um, time comes. Um, interests, I won't go through them all, but 
pretty um, travel, hopefully 2021, <laughs> there'll be more of that. Um, exercise, food, um, career insights, don't be afraid to make mistakes or ask for help. Um, you know, I think in school, especially it's easy. It's like there's a right or wrong answer. And no matter where you go in the workforce, you're going to really, or at least I hope you will challenge yourself because um, there really is so much more room to grow once you graduate college in your career. And time management is huge in any consulting role, um, especially at Mercer, we balance a couple different projects at a time, which is different than other consulting firms where you're kind of on one project at once. So it's a skill that you build in college and definitely continue to build at Mercer. Communication skills is key in consulting roles to really communicate your findings, communicate any questions you have with the client, as well as communicate internally with your project manager. And flexibility kind of relates to time management as well as analytical skills, um, which I, I know Excel is becoming popular no matter what career you take, uh, but it's not necessarily taught in depth at in college, so it's just a great skill to have. And we can move on um, to talking more about career in general. So, this is kind of the broad spectrum of services that fall under the career bucket. I know it's a lot to kind of take in. So, um, technically in career, you can be exposed to any of these uh, kind of little bubbles and silos that you wish. And they really push you to raise your hand and get involved in what interests you. So for myself, at least I've done a lot of employee rewards, which is in the green bucket. I've also done exec rewards. I would like to try and get more involved in HR transformation and workforce architecture. Job architecture is a big piece now that's coming into play. Um, we'll touch on these more in the case studies, what they are, but this just kind of shows how many different areas there are that you can get involved in within career itself. And then there's also this communications piece. So how you communicate uh, kind of organizational changes within the organization that relates to change management. And they're all kind of related. So oftentimes your project may include multiple of these. So a job architecture could be combined with an employee reward. So it's really great to have a broad skill set. Uh, moving on to the next one. This will all make more sense once we kind of go through case studies. This is just a kind of broad overview. So, okay, so human capital. So when clients come to us, it could be a, for a variety of reasons, and these are just some of them. Uh, so for example, uh, let's look at, which one do we wanna do? Let's look at cloud-based HR technology. So for example, with Workday, which is a software that um, many organizations use for their HR function, that kind of involves multiple different aspects. So you want to be able to organize your workforce appropriately uh, within the system. So that can involve kind of leveling your organization, leveling employees, creating career journeys for them so they can really see how they can progress in their career, as well as linking it to compensation. So kind of creating ranges for how an employee is expected to be paid based on market data. Another reason um, organizations may come to us is for advising the board on executive compensation. So for example, exec comp um, goes through a compensation committee board and they'll really look to us as strategic advisors as to what uh, different levers the organization could use to promote growth and um, help the executive succeed. Um, other ones would be um, leveraging data and analytics. So our workforce analytics group, this is really interesting. This They look at um, kind of how individuals are paid um, in different segments of the population. So ensuring that there is equality in pay, 
um, between uh, different segments and everything is aligned. We can keep going. Um, so if you take a holistic view of total rewards, you have kind of these three buckets. So when you think about yourself, when you're going to look at a role, some of the basic things you wanna look at are compensation. So what is the organization offering me? Um, do I feel like that is fair based on what I know other organizations are offering for similar roles and similar skill sets? The next step that you kind of think about is your career and your well-being. So we can work with organizations to kind of lay out a roadmap and lay out experiences and competencies so that employees have feel like they are in control of their career. So that type of work is much more qualitative. So it's kind of leveling, um, laying out the different skills that people need, um, different experiences that they may have that would signify a promotion into the next level. And then you think of the purpose, which is emotional. Um, so that's much more unique and can kind of lead to leadership development projects, HR transformation, but all of these we really work to provide for our clients in different ways. Go to the next slide. And here's kind of the people strategy roadmap. So one of the first steps we take, uh, and this is specifically for communication and, and change, but it's also kind of how we approach projects. So we want to identify the business strategy and make our, um, our solutions really specific to the organization and what they're trying to accomplish with their project. We want to align their business strategy with the people strategy determine a strategy moving forward in current workforce gaps, link what employees value to performance and engagement. So this can involve also surveys. Our communication department kind of um, will send out surveys and really get a feel for what employees are needing and wanting right now. Creating a total reward strategy and approach inclusive of compensation. So this is more the rewards bucket. Define how this translates to compensation levels and financial implications. So once, we, once Mercer kind of comes in and um, makes their recommendations for uh, changes or adjustments, that's a lot to take in for employees at an organization. So the communications uh, group really focuses on how to best explain this to employees so that they feel comfortable and really understand what is being changed in their organization. And then design programs within the context of the total reward strategy. So taking into account compensation, career progression, um, workforce analytics. You really want to think holistically when you're coming in and doing any project, whether it be small or large. And you can go to the next slide. So these hopefully, these case studies will hopefully help you understand kind of more in depth the type of projects we do. Um, I'll let Meredith start off with the first couple case studies. Thanks, I know we're, we'll, we'll probably go through some of these, not all of these, just give you a little bit of a flavor for each, because um, I'm just looking at the time, we have like 15 minutes. Um, but I think just to start off, so, each of these case studies will provide a lot of detail. We're not trying to overwhelm you. We'll try to speak to them a little bit more high level just so you kind of understand what we do on the ground because, you know, I feel like people say, well, I'm a consultant and it's kind of like, well, what does that really mean? So we're, we're trying to put pen to paper, if you will, for you a little bit more. Um, but, you know, as we mentioned before, ask questions and I'm sure lots will come up as we go through this. But um, so to start off, this was, a project um, for a financial or financial services kind of in the technology space company. And um, they were looking for a way to basically understand the jobs that they have in their organization um, at the various levels and across their various functions um, throughout the company. So what we helped them build is what we call a job architecture. 
So ultimately, if you, let's say, I like the analogy is you're trying to build a house, right? And you can't put the furniture in the house and all the appliances in the house without the foundation. So this is really exactly what that does is it builds the foundation to understand the hierarchy of jobs. Um, and then, you know, what are the unique, what we call families um, and subfamilies or, and, but really the unique functions of work in any organization to understand better what that career progression looks like. So this first slide just touches on like what those different components are, but ultimately it's, you know, the end result is getting us to where we understand the unique jobs that exist. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I believe there's some more detail on this. Yeah, so um, the, the great thing too about doing this prod, these types of projects and any type of project is while you might say, you know, I do a lot of X type of work, every client, it looks a little bit different. So, you know, you might start with a Mercer methodology or a framework, but it really gets adapted based on what we learn about our clients on the ground. And for this project specifically, you know, Alex and I were really embedded in the organization. We were on site with them a lot, um, really learning about their organization so we could provide the best outcome. Um, but ultimately, you know, they had an, uh, their own version of um, a hierarchy of levels, if you will, in their organization. And their issue too was they had a lot of jobs and employees that were overleveled and therefore overcompensated. Um, so what we did is basically translate their legacy framework into a new framework that provided them a lot more opportunity for career progression, um, both from a, you know, I can be a people manager and manage a team, or, you know, I want to be that chief scientist or that uh, lead accountant and I ha can have a, a career path um, that can span horizontally, vertically, diagonally, zigzag, however you want it to go, which is um, something, you know, we really stress is important for our clients because um, that's what enables like the best type of career progression. And then ultimately, what are the titles that come along with that and making sure that that's um, internally and externally relevant and relevant for them from an industry perspective. So again, I know there's a lot here, but that's kind of the general gist of it. And you know, sometimes clients um, keep this as just an HR tool um, more and more, you know, employees are wanting to know how they can progress in their careers and asking for more transparency. So things like this are communicated and used as kind of a, a common language um, in many organizations today. I think we might have one more slide on this one. Yeah, so just to give you a little flavor of like one of the components of this outside of, you know, levels, which I feel like are the more tangible um, type of out, output. Um, this is what we call, like I said, family, subfamilies, um, family groups, depends on um, the client. But essentially, this is defining unique um, disciplines and then specialties within those disciplines within an organization. So, you know, you all might be familiar with an organization structure. So, you know, within, I don't know, finance, you have accounting, you have tax, you have all different types of reporting relationships. So this tries to take a step out of that and really say, you know, I'm Meredith, where is my career path? And where do my skill sets align with other functions in the organization? So this is work that we go through by meeting with business leaders and understanding their areas of expertise and ultimately getting to a framework like this that helps them better map their jobs for um, both job definition and future career development. Um, this is a long case study, but the last little bit here that I think is a, a, becoming more and more important is how we integrate um, you know, generally speaking, all the work that we do at Mercer into a people technology system. Um, so for this client, they um, were or had um, a specific, what we call HRIS, so human resources information system to manage all their people data. Um, you all probably have something similar being in college, you know, a portal that you log into to check your classes, check your grades, um, check when schools are going to be open. It's kind of like that, but for an employee. Um, and, you know, part of our implementation process is, you know, how do we integrate um, 
the work that we do into their system so that they can actually make it useful. So this just highlights kind of the different terminology and, and how you might define this in a system, which really kind of brings this full circle. Oh, someone asked really quickly, is this solution like Salesforce? So yes, very similar. Um, but think of Salesforce as exactly what it sounds like for your sales professionals and for managing kind of that sales process. This is the corollary to that on the people side. So I'm an employee of Mercer. I can go into our people system. I can see my vacation days. I can see my timesheets. I can see my benefits and retirement and my compensation, um, my performance and goals, kind of all those things in one place. Um, and if you're a people manager, you know, you can see all that for your team. So very similar in that sense that it's managing um, a, a specific set of data related to your people. Good question. Um, so the second case study I like, because it's a little bit more all encompassing and really takes a higher level strategic view from the onset. So this was another project that I worked on um, and again, to our point before, you know, different project, different project team. Um, both of these, I think, were probably over the course of a year. So bigger projects, but um, multifaceted with multiple people involved. Um, and for this client, you know, they are more of a traditional company and they were looking to really understand where their problems were on the ground and create a, um, what we would call kind of like a reward strategy. So let's call it a talent or people and pay strategy um, for you know the next two to three years. So we did a little bit of the work as I highlighted before, but building on that, we actually said, okay, we've built the framework of the house. Now we have to fill the house with all of its components. And how much is that going to cost us? You know, how many, um, what types of jobs are we going to fill the house with or the company with? Um, how are we going to pay those people? And overall, what's our philosophy and, and design program and to design programs around that. So that's in a nutshell. There's a lot of terminology here that when you all get into the workforce, you'll become more and more familiar with because you yourselves will have the opportunity to earn all these things and see all these things. But it's ultimately, you know, what am I paying my employees and how am I doing that? Um, so if we go to the next slide. So again, I, I think one thing to think about when we do any of these projects is, is the strategic side of it. We, wanna under, we want to understand not only the business strategy, but what their goals are within um, you know, the talent and people space that complement and support the business strategy. And so for this client, we went through an exercise where we said, um, you know, it's not a one size fits all. So how do we, um, take our population and those, those distinct disciplines that we identified before, and how do we map them against um, kind of like a platform that says, you know, here's our, our core jobs that we need, here's the strategic ones that are maybe more hard to come by that we might need to pay a premium for, and then here's ones that, you know, hypothetically we could get anywhere, um, and then here's like our, our true specialists and how do we have differentiated strategies to meet these different types of populations of people. Um, so I think the, the moral of, of this portion of the project is just really understanding the strategy on the ground. So we'll do lots of executive interviews and then, you know, summarize our findings that will then inform the on the ground work that we do. So um, I think in the interest of time, I'll kind of like skip over this, but this just kind of highlights, you know, how we take that and translate it into a pay program and pay philosophy, kind of tying to those levels that we talked about before. Um, and one thing I will just highlight, you know, how we get from point A to point B is Mercer as a company. We have a huge um, survey business. So all of our clients, you know, that's the benefit of being a consultancy is we have all of our clients that give us all their great data and we're able to synthesize that and provide insights on you know different industries different markets um in order to develop these i'll call them pay programs for clients so it kind of works both ways um so i'll again i'll touch on this one really quickly but i think um you know to bring all of our work to life 
you know, we, we often talk about implementation, change management, and communication, and that can look very different across different projects. Um, but ultimately, you know, our, our largest and most successful projects are probably where change management communication is embedded into the work from the beginning, where we'll build out a communication strategy um, to, you know, understand where the pain points are, what different populations need to know and why, you know, what types of cultural changes might this um, have, um, you know, how do we avoid employee talk and really get in front of um, the employee population to inform them of changes that are going to happen, you know, what, what is required across different geographies. And, you know, we often play a hand in hand role with the client to, um, you know, whether it's develop toolkits and trainings or do communications workshops to help them realize the, the actual outcomes and implement the results that we ultimately recommend. So that kind of brings it all home. And then I know we'll, I'll pass it off to Alex. She'll spend a few more minutes talking about some other great work that we do. Okay. So one so we got to, I think. Yeah, if go to case site four. Yep, okay. So one of the big pieces, um, and especially in the New York office, so it's definitely not all of it, is executive rewards. And this is kind of its own silo. Um, so this kind of gives an overview of the different things that we take into consideration when proposing solutions for our clients. And often executive rewards, clients are reoccurring. So they kind of happen cyclically. Um, and you kind of keep the same client year over year. So uh, I guess if we look to the right, that no one size fits all solution kind of gives you a good highlight. So peers in industry, you, especially for executives, your peer group really plays a large role in how you pay employees. So looking at the size of the organization, their revenue scope, um, uh, what industry they're in, kind of whether they're in retail or whether they're um, a professional services company. Then you also look at more economic factors. So the economic run rate, the total share usage and plan capacity, those kind of involve a lot of modeling. So if you're very much so into numbers uh, in Excel, this, is, this may be very interesting to you. Uh, shareholder and proxy advisor guidelines, critical task, talent, employee engagement. So those are more soft goals, but definitely need to be included when you think about um, uh, incentives for executives. And then broader human capital implication. So for example, with COVID, um, uh, especially when uh, in March, when everything was initially happening and some organizations were implementing pay cuts for the broader employee uh, population. You really have to be considerate of how you're compensating executives and make sure that it aligns with the total strategy or else if you end up just cutting uh, employee, the broader employee population's incentives or salaries and keep executives the same, that will look really, really poorly uh, throughout the organization. So there are many different aspects to keep in mind uh, if you go to the next, next slide, pay equity. So this is more the analytics piece. Um, generally, these uh, kind of roles, you come in with kind of a master's or PhD, although not required, um, but it's definitely more heavy in the modeling aspect and SQL and um, really that data analytics role. But this work is very, very cool. So um, it kind of looks at individual attributes. So you can see here your compensation, gender, race, experience, prior experience, as well as these other factors to see if there is consistency within these attributes. So similar skills, similar performance should be paid similarly, similarly regardless of uh, gender, race, tenure, age. Um, and then you can run first pass models. Again, I'm not too familiar with this myself, this in depth, 
because this is not the group I'm in. But, um, and then model different aspects of it and then identify at risk groups. So you can either verify or deny that a company is paying their employees fairly regardless of these different attributes or uh, geographic conditions, et cetera. And one thing I'll just mention here, because I'm actually doing a project like this right now, it's becoming, this is an area that's growing for us right now because of, um, I guess, the current um, economic, political, um, social climate in the US. So imagine like all of the clients that are coming to us about diversity and inclusion and, and from a pay equity perspective, how you pay people fairly against not just the market, but internally is becoming more and more important. And we're seeing a lot more of that type of work. Yep. Um, and then if we go on to the next slide. And last but not least, actually Meredith may want to touch on this because I think she's done a little bit more of this. Do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I like this example because it's a little bit more qualitative in nature. I will say, you know, as a um, analyst or, you know, entry role um, on the team, you know, we do a lot of data analytics and Excel type work, but there's kind of both sides of the coin between change management communication and this type of work, which is um, we do a lot of leadership development and succession planning. Um, so this is really um, looking at the leadership life cycle, if you will. So all the way from helping them define strategy and, and what is needed to have a successful leader. So, you know, what are the skill sets required in defining that model or, you know, how is that different from the rest of our population in terms of evaluating performance and identifying what true success of leaders, both CEO and management and boards, what that looks like. And then really cool is we have really cool tools that help us actually assess leaders. So I'm sure if you went home and asked your parents and said, you know, oh, have you ever had executive coaching or taken any kind of like professional assessment? Um, you know, perhaps some of them would say yes. Um, and so we have tools where we actually can go into organizations and um, use the tools that we have to assess leadership. So, you know, think about it as like a personal survey and actually did one of these in college too, um, where, um, you know, they're taking an online survey, if you will, and then Mercer kind of helps coach them through um, to ultimately be able to have detailed insights on how to be a better leader. And then, you know, we built the strategy, we've assessed the talent, then how do we actually go into building for the future? So that's kind of where the succession and also like building programs comes into place. So whether that's building in um, talent management processes, or I've worked with, I'm working with a healthcare client right now where we're helping them form a learning institute across all their different, um, I guess, departments and segments of the business. And then ultimately, you know, how these programs feed into planning for the future. So planning for the future CEO, planning for the future board, planning for other key leadership roles, and what is the evaluation and goal setting required to do that. And then, you know, you start it all over again. Um, so this is really cool work because one, you get to interact with a lot of senior leaders, but two, you get to kind of put your head together on um, not just like crunching numbers, but taking a, a, you know, a specific client strategy and translating that into what's needed from their leaders, which I think is really cool. So that's definitely not comprehensive of everything we do, but hopefully that gives you a little bit more um, insight into those types of things. I know when I was in your shoes, it, it's hard to, you know, go to all these different companies and say, so what does that mean you actually do? So hopefully this gives you a little bit of that and you know there's lots more here that you can peruse at your um during all your free time um but i think we i know we're running out of time so i think we wanted to open up for question and answer so osma i'll turn it back over to you to kind of help facilitate sure um all right guys um if you guys would, if there's any brave souls out there, if you want to take yourselves um, off mute and um, put yourselves on video, you can feel free to do so um, and ask Alex and Meredith any questions or any of uh, the recruiters any questions. Um, and if not, you can definitely ask some questions in the chat and we can um, collectively take a look and get those answered. All right, looks like we have a question coming in. 
Did you want to ask your question verbally, David? Uh, okay, sure. So I have a question. I wasn't sure how to do it. Um, I should put it on the chat now, but yeah, speak it out. So uh, many of uh, consulting uh, business is in the big four accounting firms. So would you say it's very important to have an accounting background and start off um, and get some experience in accounting before consulting or it's two separate areas? Yeah, I, I can take that. I think it's two separate areas. Um, if you had to put us in a bucket, I, we probably wouldn't fall in that big four bucket. We're probably more of like competing with the McKenzie's and the Deloitte's out there. Um, so definitely don't need to have accounting background. I think actually Mercer encourages um, students to come from all different backgrounds because that's what brings unique perspectives to the table. Alex, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Uh, no, I think you covered it. I, I actually can take um, the next question though. What differentiates Mercer from other consulting groups? Um, so I think that the culture is huge. Um, I think that it is very collaborative. I have personally a lot of great mentors that I've made. Um, and from uh, other consulting groups specifically, it's not your travel Monday through Thursday type of firm. Um, you are also staffed on more than one project at a time, which ties back to my time management comment. But you know, part of the reason I moved to New York was because I really wanted to experience New York. So for me, being able to be in the city. Yes, we do travel occasionally, but oftentimes it's closer within the tri-state area, or as you become more senior, you start to do more trips, but they're, you know, for one or two days at a time, but you really aren't living out of the suitcase, which I think is a big difference from a lot of the other big consulting firms. Do you have anything to add, Meredith? Um, no, I think you summed it up well. And really, I stress the culture is really collaborative and everyone's willing to help. Um, and that's, that ties back to me making friends at Mercer, but also just broader getting that mentorship for, and having people feel like they really are invested in your career and helping you grow and want you to succeed. That's huge here. Um, what else? Um, so, I've got a question, I guess. I'm not sure if... We're going yeah, by. Go uh, so for people who are coming in with like, let's say a PhD or something like that, are y'all looking for specific majors or specific backgrounds and skill sets for people with those kinds of advanced degrees? Yeah, I mean, I can take this one and then I don't know if any of the recruiters probably have a more straightforward answer, but at least from my experience in career um, and recruiting in general, like we don't I think if you have a master's, PhD or whatever, that's great. And it might impact like at what level you get hired into depending on your experience. Um, but again, I'll, I'll reiterate that we look for people from all different backgrounds. We don't necessarily require you to have X, Y, or Z degree for any role. Um, I think that's one unique thing about Mercer and just you have really great career progression opportunities here, no matter what kind of educational background you have. Um, we obviously look for students that are getting a, a four year university degree. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, definitely value add and great, but by no means a requirement. Thank you. Um, let's see what else. Um, some of these I know are related, like from the international questions that I'm sure the recruiters can handle offline, um, and about the roles and whatnot, but one question um, does Mercer Consulting in the Total Rewards area include projects in the global mobility compensation benefit space? So um, the answer is yes, except for the benefits piece. Um, benefits would fall under that wealth umbrella, I mean, sorry, that health umbrella that I talked about in the beginning. That being said, more and more of our projects are becoming integrated across our different lines of business. So I've definitely had projects where there's benefit components involved. Um, but compensation is probably at the crux and the, the core of what we do in career. Um, it all kind of boils down to, well, what do I pay? Because that's the, the, the true cost at hand. So the short answer is yes. Mobi and mobility is definitely a part of that as well. It depends on what office you're into. Um, one yeah. other question is, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I, I had a question. I just wanted to interject if possible. Yeah, go ahead. 
Hi, my name is Latifa. I wanted to know, does Mercer offer relocation assistance? And could you talk a little bit more about your EAPs and what type of benefits you all offer? Um, hi, I can take that. We do not offer any specific relocation um, benefits. We do offer for our new hires um, you know, a small amount of sign-on bonus which is meant to be kind of like a catch-all uh, bonus that could um, a new hire could use it for their relocation costs or um, any other costs that they have associated with starting a new, uh, a new career. And then Latifa, sorry, apologies. What was the second part of your question? I wanted to get more information about your um, employee assistance programs, what type of things you all offer as far as that mental health support and things like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, fo uh, following the presentation, we'll be sending out some more resources um, and we'll make sure to include some information on that. You guys can take a look. Um, there's probably some, some plenty of information out there so we can um, cascade that down to you guys and you guys can review. One thing I want awesome. to add, Thank you. one thing I want to add just in terms of relocation, we, to Ozma addressed the uh, new hire, the full-time new hires. We do offer us a housing stipend though too for interns if you're if you're working more than 50 miles from your permanent home location. So that's something that we do offer for interns as well. Thank you. I'll go next. Um, so I was curious for the associate role, I know you can go into it from an MBA. Um, what's kind of the experience that you're looking for for the associate role if we were coming maybe straight from an MBA and also um, in regards to the associate role, how does the collaboration and teamwork look like when you're working on these different projects? Do you want to take that one? So you're saying how are the projects structured in terms of the team internally? Yes. Okay, so it kind of can vary based on each project. Generally, there will be a partner that kind of oversees the overall strategy and project execution. They kind of own the client relationship. Um, you'll likely have a principal on there as well, and the principal will be more hands-on and kind of overseeing the overall project. You'll generally have at least one analyst or senior analyst, and then give or take, you'll have either an associate or a senior associate working closely with analysts, overseeing the work, um, doing that first pass as like a peer review before it gets cascaded up to principal and or partner for final review. Um, I would say associates and senior associates have more um, client facing and project management responsibilities than you would as an analyst. Um, but it's not, it's still, you're still in the weeds to some extent, much more than a partner or a principal is. But you kind of have your teams are usually at least three people. So mix partner, principal, analyst, associate, or senior associate. Good question. That makes sense. Thanks for um, the clarification. Um, what else? This is really overwhelming. Um, I'm a lot of great questions. Um, so how long does it take to become a senior consultant? If you're talking about senior analyst, um, usually six months to a year, but it's all uh, depending on your performance and your experience level and the projects you take on. Uh, what else? Um, time management. Yeah, so I mean, it's kind of like you all experience in school where you're balancing different competing priorities with classes. Uh, sometimes you'll be balancing different clients at one time. and you really are kind of subject. We, although we give um, requested time to receive data from clients or um, there is some leeway into when you can give deliverables to clients, um, you may be thrown something last minute and you kind of have to balance, okay, can I wait one day on this project if it means that I can deliver for this other client or what's the right balance and how do I really manage my time between clients? And that is really important to communicate to your project manager. So the principal, the senior associate, the partner on the project. So they really have a good idea of timing that they can expect to get it um, for at least the first review. Um, 
I can take, yeah. I can take one too. Um, I'll, I'll actually answer the one about innovation because I, I like that question. Um, because I mean, again, Alex and I haven't been at Mercer for ages, but even in our time here, I think we've seen Mercer grow and adapt in a lot of different ways. Um, so to mention a couple things, I, I already touched on this before, but I think even in the past like six months, I can say confidently that Mercer has probably historically been, because we have so many niche areas, I'll say a little bit more siloed in the way we work, but we've really in the past couple of years started to bridge those gaps and come together and really have innovative methodologies and practices that enable us to find the links and efficiencies between all the different types of work that we do, which ultimately creates more value for our clients. Um, and then I think another big piece too is we have a lot of different, which we didn't focus too much on today, but different technology solutions that we offer our clients um, and how we kind of bridge the gap between um, you know, disparate systems and bringing that together to provide technology solutions that, you know, can foster and help clients with different types of things, whether that's um, outplacement. So when, you know, employees leave the company, how they continue to stay connected, whether it's data management for some of their surveys, um, whether it's like job description portals. Like, I mean, we have a ton of technologies that we offer clients that I think, um, you know, will be very much integral to the future and growth of Mercer. Um, and then actually we do have an internal like innovation group. So I think this is really cool too. So I, we're in the New York office, but in New Jersey, we have an innovation hub. So we bring clients out there and it's this like cool space with all these different whiteboards and we bring clients out there to basically do design thinking sessions. And that's kind of our incubator for the next and the latest and greatest, if you will. So we might devise methodologies or different programs or offerings that come out of that innovation hub. Um, so it's very much grounded in innovation principles and collaboration and really brainstorming with our clients. And, you know, cause we view them as key partners, not just us delivering, but us collaborating with them as well. And I think we probably have time for one or maybe two more questions if we can go a minute or two over. Um, hey, I'm sorry, I, I asked that previous question you answered. Could I come up with the following question to that? Sure. What is Mercer's strategy in terms of you guys in the consulting role? And, and I know you kind of hit on like the innovation that you guys have, but like the second part of that question was where, you, where do you see yourself in like 10 years at Mercer or Mercer in 10 years? Um, could you kind of point at that? Yeah. Um... <sighs> That's a difficult question because you know the, the future of work is kind of unpredictable and that changes year to year. But I would say, I think in the next 10 years, and maybe this is a good one to end on, um, and Alex can share her opinions too. I kind of view Mercer as like the one-stop shop for everything related to, I don't like the word HR because it's kind of like old speak, but anything related to your people and a company and how to optimize that. And so I really see Mercer as like, the leader in that space and continuing to bring all of our businesses together so that you know a, a client comes to us and they say here's what i need mercer and then we as a total company are able to service that client which we are today but like i mentioned you know we have subject matter experts in so many different areas that if we were to do that our project teams become 20 plus people um, because of the different areas of expertise. So perhaps we become a little bit more broad and strategic in the nature of our consulting services. And then we have technology and tools that help automate some of that. So it's less siloed and we can come together more and you know just have bigger, more strategic, impactful projects. That would kind of be how I see Mercer evolving in the next 10 years. Alex, I don't know if you have any closing words to wrap that one up. Um, I think you covered what I would what I would respond. So I know there are a lot more questions. Um, we'll get with the recruiters if you have specific questions for us and we're happy to take the conversation offline. So I'll turn it back to you guys to wrap up with everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, Meredith and um, Alex, for taking the time to chat with everyone today. Um, and we all enjoyed learning about your background and your experience. Um, and everyone on the call, thank you so much for joining our session. Um, as mentioned, you will be receiving some resources and some emails from um, the recruiters. So you can feel free to follow up and ask any of the other questions and we'll make sure to get those answered. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.